This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Please enjoy. Hey. Yeah. No, thanks for having me. Where should I put my jacket? Over. You know. Thanks for having me. Oh, glasses. I need to lose the glasses. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd love to try this idea. Um, maybe, you know, I, I wanted to save it as a more of a dramatic moment where I sort of take off my glasses and it's like I'm I'm connecting with the audience, you know. No, cool. Yeah, we can try. We can try your idea. Oh, should I take my glasses off? The glare. Oh, hey, thanks for having me. Oh, I need to take my glasses off. Well, I appreciate the water. <laughs> I'm already grabbing for my glasses. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable on camera, although I guess I have this mask, I guess it's a little easier. Yeah, oh, you want, you want to start with? The mask. Yeah, no, I mean, let's start there. <coughs> um, so this is a mask of my own face. Uh, I use it to demonstrate a concept I'm calling emotional anonymity um, in a way that it sort of hides uh, the emotional information I'm communicating uh, visually on my face. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, yeah. Thanks for the water, too. Oh, before we get started, I guess I just, the, it's like a little too close, and you, you can start to see uh, that I'm like smiling. <coughs>
Uh, I think that just comes from trying to protect as much personal information as I can. Oh yeah, I just want to get my face straight here before we continue. What? What do you got? I I need my glasses. I can't <laughs> can't even see without my glasses. I won't leave these on, but I just I gotta see what you're what you're showing me. Okay, yeah. Well, the story starts when I learned that the when you if you like drinking Pina Colada song wasn't written by Jimmy Buffett. Because in my mind, for whatever reason, like that, that's a Jimmy Buffett song. So when I learned that, it, I mean, essentially it blew my mind. Um, and so then I started thinking, uh, you know, maybe I'd like jumped timelines, you know, it was to heard people talk about like the the Baron Stain Bears thing where people thought like you know it was Stain or it was Steen and people got confused and thought like maybe we ended up in like a different timeline based on that and so I started trying to think like what would have what would the source have been you know when how did I like jump timelines and the first thing that came to mind was this moment when I was on house arrest in high school uh, I had a friend come over while my parents were at work uh, and we uh, smoked salvia in the garage and we were, we were sitting on my dad's riding lawnmower, um, which I, I didn't have, like, anything, you know, to lean against or anything, and so I, you know, start to feel the effects of the salvia, and I'm, like, starting to lean back, but I'm, I'm feeling like I don't want to fall back, so I'm, like, resisting, but, like, part of me feels like, almost like my consciousness, like, kept falling back. So somewhere in the middle of the apex of these contrasting forces, like, you know, falling back and trying to stay upright, I think that's the moment that it happened. I jumped timelines because I felt like I'd fallen out of the right side of my body. And that's why I think, you know, that isn't a Jimmy Buffett song. Okay, so what am I looking at here? <laughs> right. Okay, I'll try to answer this quickly because I know we don't have a ton of time left. But I found it better to make work than to not. And now I'm interested in that state of push or reaching for that next idea or inspiration. And I realized it feels connected to addictive behavior. I was always told we don't drink because your great grandpa was an alcoholic. But I found myself romanticizing a wook posing as a hippie and started reading Hunter S. Thompson after I got arrested and sent to intensive outpatient addiction care. Then my probation officer, also named Josh, made me get a job where I met my first blotter plug. Fairbanks is the name of the rehab center I went to and the name of the town my family's farm is located. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we were unable to finish our interview with the artist, Joshua McGarvey. Eight months later, with safety precautions in place, we sent Cole, our camera operator, to Joshua's home studio so we could finish our conversation virtually.
please enjoy this intimate conclusion to our interview with the artist, Joshua McGarvey. <clears throat> hey, sorry about that. Hi, I just need to take care of something real quick. But, get everything set up. Cool. Just give me a sec. Alright, let's get started. I'm Joshua McGarvey, and my work explores the concepts of which we begin to look between what could be a glimpse of reckoning for reality and those who prescribe to the notion that we can take over the space and time from which the essence laid bare the fruit of our will and natural state of being. <laughs> what is this? Did, did you write this? You found this? Yeah. No, I did not write this. I mean, I, I found some, like, weird stuff online, but I, I hadn't found this. Who wrote this about me? Would this be considered a catfish or a troll? Anyways... It's nice to see you, even if it's just virtually. Well, yeah, what's it been like? Uh, s seven months since we started the other interview. I mean, that's why I got the mask. Anyways, I'm really glad you're here at my could come to my home studio. Yeah, let's take a tour. This is my desk. I'm gonna do some, like, B-roll shots and me just, like, working at my desk. Sorry, can we actually go back to the text you had me read? I'm fixated on it now. It's unusual, but it sort of like comes with the territory, putting things out into the world and people react. Like, well, I guess whoever wrote this on the internet as if I had written it. I guess I just can't tell if it's a catfish, troll, or fan fiction. This reminds me of something else I read about myself on the internet, but before I get started, can we set up somewhere else? I'm just really uncomfortable in this chair. Oh, thanks. No, yeah, I just, I needed to get out of that camping chair. Those chairs are not comfortable. I mean, I think oh, we probably should have been doing the interview from here anyways. It's very intimate. Anyways, um, back to the story. I was telling you about what I read for myself on the internet. as part of a biography or something. It said when I was a teenager, my counselor gave me an IQ test. And after about five questions or prompts, the counselor stopped the test and told me I had aced every question so far, and he'd never seen anyone do that before. So we didn't complete the test. And then the story goes on to say this moment really stuck with me, and I never knew if this was just a method to manipulate me into building my self-esteem. And so then I started thinking about how if this really did happen to me, I would definitely be asking these questions. But now I'm just like, 
lost. Like, this didn't happen to me. Just someone wrote it randomly on the internet. Is that a troll? You know, I like this position for, at the beginning, but now I, my hands feel weird. Um, do you care if I change, actually? So, yeah, I think this went really well. Um, you got any other, or anything we think we pretty much done? I don't know, I think I maybe just hit my limit with this. You know, you sort of just, oh, what, do I have something on my hat? Hmm, thread. But, I'm just not feeling it anymore. Aren't you drained? Like, What's the point? This artist profile. Maybe if I'm lucky, 50 people watch. I mean, not that I'm not grateful for the opportunity. And obviously, I appreciate your support and interest in my work. But, you know, what am I doing? Is this anything? Was that good? I mean, hopefully we got something. We would like to thank the voters of Minnesota and the Minnesota State Arts Board for making this possible. Thank you for watching.